After being brought back from Oblivion back in 2019, Aptera Motors has been gaining quite some traction with its flagship SEV. We've seen the evolution of the Aptera from the Alpha through to the Gamma, revealed at fully charged live event. There have been some major improvements in the car's interior and exterior design so far. In today's video, we are going to be going over all the major changes that Aptera has made so far as we look back from the Alpha and Gamma prototypes, and I have to say, it's a pretty interesting list, so be sure to stick around to the end to find out. Hi, this is Echo Electric, where we talk about all things concerning EVs. Remember to like the video. If you're enjoying our content, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications in order to stay connected. Let's get into the video. For those unfamiliar with Aptera, it might be helpful to know that Aptera structured its production process into a couple of phases. These phases included the early prototypes to validate their basic design and engineering, starting with the Alpha model. Aptera released three Alpha models. First was the Noir, which was predominantly black, and its name derives from the French word for black. The second Alpha iteration was the Sol model, released in June 2021, which was predominantly white and named from the Spanish word for sun. The Lunar was the final Alpha model to be released in 2021, and its name was inspired by humankind's fascination with space travel and technological innovation. The second phase of production for Aptura was the Beta, in which test mules were used to evaluate dynamic and transient vehicle behavior. The benefit was characterized by extensive testing of the suspension, as well as improvements to turning radius geometry, door, seals, and latches with the help of Roche, a recognized global leader in engineering prototyping testing and manufacturing. Aptera was able to make significant progress in the development phase back in January 2020. The Gamma phase is the third of four phases that incorporates the development of vehicles to represent production intent functionalities and features. Aptera recently unveiled the Gamma at Fully Charged Live, and we have been learning a lot about the car ever since. The Delta is the final phase of production, and it is the production intent vehicle. Customers will take delivery of the Delta, the final production model of the SEV. That said, there have been a series of developments and changes from the Alpha through to the current Gamma phase, and there are some changes we expect from the Gamma going into the Delta phase. So then let's go over some key changes we've seen from the Alpha through to the Gamma. First up is the battery pack sizes. The battery pack sizes have also been announced in much detail since the Alpha. We know that the 250-mile version will have a 23-kWh battery, while the 400-mile version will have a 45-kWh battery with 41kWh of useful energy. The 600-mile version will have a 66kWh battery, and the 1,000-mile version will have a 99kWh battery. But the 150-mile variant, as many have predicted, will be the most efficient because it is the lightest and hence requires a lower battery pack size than the others. The 400-mile version contains a 45kWh battery pack that holds around 9% of the energy and reserve to increase the battery's life. Interestingly, the 600-mile version has a 66kWh battery pack, which probably includes this 9-10% to energy. Finally, the battery pack in the 1,000-mile version is only 99kWh. Aptera indicated that they ran out of room for a 110 kilowatt hour pack, or it could just be a mass manufacturing aspect implying that they didn't want to make too many battery variants in order to keep the price competitive. In any case, we can expect the 400 mile version with the 45 kilowatt hour battery to be released first and the other variants will follow after. Number 2. The Steering Yoke so we learned from the Gamma teaser revealed back in August that the Gamma and possibly the Delta will feature a steering yoke, and it has no doubt generated some mixed feelings. And it remains to be seen what impressions the yoke will leave as the Delta gets into our hands. Since Aptera announced a steering yoke supplier for its SEV, there's still been a lot of uncertainty regarding the yoke. I personally think the yoke is going to stay, but we expect some tweaking to the steering yoke that will make it functionally more appealing than other EVs in the market that also have a yoke like the Tesla Model S Plaid. Number 3. 
Door and trunk, knock to open system. Door knock was new. We've seen the knock system in earlier prototypes for the main doors, but what we didn't know is that this knock system was also going to be featured for the trunk as well. Whatever advantages and disadvantages of this knock system remain to be seen. Number four, interior materials. Most of the materials we saw inside the Aptera are production intent, with the exception of the pineapple leather. According to Altera, this did not meet the quality standards and so this is going to be removed, but they will replace it with something that looks very similar, but of a higher quality. The gray areas of the front and rear of the wheel pans are made from a hard foam that is designed to degrade over time. Aptera has made these parts easily removable, as they're most likely to get damaged. Number 5. Exterior and Body Shape The body shape will also be changed slightly. The belly of the Aptera has now been lowered a little bit, presumably to help them better fit in the battery, but also perhaps to help them fit in a third seat. Number 6. Number of Vents There are lots of vets on the Aptera. Some of the vents are on the edge of the main screen. There are also front and side defrost vents for the windows and windshield, as well as ventilation in both footwells. Number 7. The number of solar cells on the exterior. We noticed that the six small solar cells arranged on the rear deck are gone, but Aptera has increased the number of cells it includes in the roof and front solar arrays. The company has also hinted that it may offer additional solar charging, possibly a separate array that can be used when the vehicle is stationary. Perform has been revealed, so we just have to wait and see. We however got news recently that solar production has already begun with this cross-company collaboration with Maxin. After a solar engineers have created ultra-lightweight and curved solar cells that will set the standard for efficiency as Aptera is defying conventional rules of aerodynamics. The integration of these cells will enable the vehicle to achieve unprecedented solar range. We've also put a link in the description to the video where we covered the announcement of Aptera partnering with Maxin Solar Technologies, and in another video, which we will leave below the like button. We also covered the difficulties Aptera faces with its solar panels and why Maxin was the company of choice, so be sure to also check that video out, link below the like button. And finally, Number 8. A third seat. Apparently Aptura is going to be making some of these vehicles with a third seat. The vehicle will come with an available additional seat in the rear for an extra passenger. We don't know if they'll be integrated in the center or on the side, but it will definitely make the Aptura a little more appealing to more people, especially if it's a full-size seat that can accommodate an adult. There was a surprise announcement by Chris Anthony that the 250-mile version of the Aptera, which is the base version, will come with an optional third seat. However, Aptera is more focused on producing the 400-mile version, which will be released first, and not the 250-mile version. So, they haven't actually started developing the seating area as far as we know. We're going to be ending here for now but there's certainly more changes that have been so far that we haven't covered in this video. But don't fret, we will be talking about the rest of them in a subsequent video. If you have any questions you'd like to have answered regarding Aptera's SUV, be sure to write them in the comments section below, and we'll go through them and hopefully answer some of those questions. That's all for now. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing so you don't miss future videos on the topic and also so you can help support the channel grow. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.